So <coughs> Melchizedek is a slightly different topic, but it still gets in that same issue. Uh, could, could Christ, does Christ appear in the Old Testament? So it still gets into that. So I started out uh, in this course, I started out because I, I just, I can't keep from quoting Augustine and Calvin in my courses. And uh, I, this is a wonderful quote from St. Augustine. And you notice uh, this is from a 19th century translation. And notice that there's no E on Augustine. So as that's not a typo. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's how it was actually spelled in the 19th century. If catechumens, so what are catechumens? Uh, what do we call them in this church when they're 11 and they're going to join the church? Confirmation. Con confirmation. So same thing. Confirmations. Confir confir whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's what a catechumen is. If catechumens understand not something, let them lay aside sloth and hasten unto knowledge. People don't talk like that anymore. Isn't that cool? It is not, therefore, needful for me to disclose mysteries here. Let the scriptures intimate to you what is the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. So here's Augustine himself saying that one of the most important things in the Old Testament that we should be teaching catechumens, new Christians, is the mysteries of the priesthood of Melchizedek. So I thought that was a good start. Yeah. So, we have some questions. So, is the mysterious Melchizedek Christ? Why would we even consider that the mysterious Melchizedek could be Christ? Well, if Melchizedek is just a guy, you know, that happened to appear in the Old Testament for four verses, it seems a little strange that the book of Hebrews in the New Testament would spend a chapter and a half comparing Christ to him. It would be almost blasphemous in a way to compare Christ to a human. So that, that that might be a reason right there. If it wasn't for the book of Hebrews, we probably wouldn't even be having this discussion. But the book of Hebrews is there, and we're going to look at that in a moment. Now, you should know that Calvin said such an identification was foolish. Wesley wasn't convinced by it either. Wesley was kind of, well, some people say it's so, and others don't. And we don't know. So that was Wesley's take on it. <laughs> This one, uh, so, so, so who, did, who, who does think that Melchizedek was Christ? Uh, St. Ambrose, Bishop of Milan, the guy that baptized uh, Augustine. Uh, Clement of Alexandria, St. John. Uh, so Melchizedek, uh, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. And he blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hands. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. Now, it's also important to note here, are there any Jews yet? This is long before Moses. This is long before Levitical law. Yeah, they didn't know, they didn't know to give a tithe yet because there, there wasn't anything written. Right. Yeah. The, 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 there, were, there were no Jewish laws about tithing. So here, Abram, who is the hero, uh, you know, of the early part of the Old Testament, is tithing to this this person long before there is even a, a series of laws that, that even tell you what tithing are. It doesn't really say Christian why. scholars believe that this is talking about Christ. This is talking about the coming Messiah, and the the first couple verses, which or the first verse, which will be very familiar to you. Is, uh, is actually quoted by Jesus uh, in an argument with the Pharisees. To, and so Jesus has kind of proven who he is. So uh, here we go. The Lord says to my Lord, and this one's important. The first Lord is capitalized, so it's Yahweh. The second one is capital L, but it's not Yahweh. So the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Uh, the Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion. You will rule in the midst of your enemies. Your troops will be willing on your day of battle, arrayed in holy majesty. From the womb of the dawn, you will receive the dew of your youth. And then here is the, the thing that fits in here. The Lord is sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So, if this is, is talking about the Messiah, and we believe the Messiah is Christ, then Christ is forever a priest in the order of Melchizedek. 
So that means Christ is is the Messiah. He's the King. Right. But it also means he's a priest. And what 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 was uh, Melchizedek? He was a king, and he, a and he was a priest. Mm -hmm. And it's also important to note that the priesthood we're talking about here predates uh, the Levites. Mm -hmm. It predates Judaism. So he's not talking about the <coughs> priesthood of the Levites or the Sadducees. This long predates that. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, his name means king of righteousness. Then also, king of Salem means king of peace. We covered all these. Uh, without father or mother, without genealogy, and without beginning of days or end of life, like the son of God, he remains a priest forever. And by the way, that's as close as he gets in here. He says, like the son of God, he doesn't equate them. Just think how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth of the plunder. So notice, I mean, even using the word patriarch is to show, okay, so here's the guy who founded our religion, and he's giving this other guy a tenth of his plunder. Uh, now the law requires the descendants of Levi who become priests to collect a tenth from the people, that is, their brothers, even though their brothers are descended from Abraham. So now we're getting into, you know, well, you know, the, the Levites would collect a, a tithe from the Jews. So, so is this the same as that, or is this different? Uh, this man, however, did not trace his descent from Levi, uh, yet he collected a tenth from Abraham and blessed him, uh, who had the promises. And without doubt, the lesser person is blessed by the greater. So making the case that whoever this guy was, he's greater than even Abraham, the great patriarch Abraham. Uh, in the one case, the tenth is collected by men who died. That would be the, the Levitical priesthood. But in the other case, by him who is declared to be living. That gets real close, doesn't it? Uh, of saying that Melchizedek is, is God. One might even say that Levi, uh, that collects the tenth, paid the tenth through Abraham. Because when Melchizedek met Abraham, Levi was still in the body of his ancestor. Kind of reminding us that, we know, there was religion before the Jews. And there was religion before Levitical law. If perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood, for on the basis of it the law was given to the people, why was there still need for another priest to come? One in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron. So when there is a change of the priesthood, there must also be a change of the law. So now he's making the case you don't really need to follow the Levitical priesthood anymore. You need to follow the priesthood of Melchizedek, of which Christ is part of. Uh, he of whom these things are said uh, belong to a different tribe, and no one from that tribe has ever served at the altar. Uh, for it is clear that our Lord descended from Judah, and in regard to that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. And now we're, okay, well, so how, how can Jesus be a high priest? Because he comes from the tribe of Judah, which is, is not the, the, the Jewish line of secession for the priesthood. Uh, and what we have said uh, here is even more clear if another priest like Melchizedek appears, one who has become a priest not on the basis of a regulation as to his ancestry, uh, but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life. For it is declared, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So you see what the, the, the agenda of the writer of this was, is to say the true high priest is not the Levitical priesthood. They're, they're of this earth. They'll come and go. And they did go. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were destroyed uh, when the, uh, the temple was destroyed by, uh, by Titus in 70 A.D. Uh, the, the priesthood, the high priest you should be focusing on is, is the order of Melchizedek, of which Christ is, is the high priest of that order. So you, you, you see the comparisons being made uh, between uh, Christ and Melchizedek. Uh, it's so, telling us that Christ, but he doesn't come quite out and say that Melchizedek was a pre-incarnate Christ. But he does say that the Levitical priesthood dies, but that the other priesthood lives forever and that the tithe was given to one who lives forever.